class is going to be called a well-oiled machine. A well-oiled machine. Uh, we'll start out with 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Might, go, might, be, might move kind of quick, so make sure you're paying attention. Take some quick notes. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. So this is the Apostle Paul speaking in his letter to the Corinthians. He says that concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. Meaning he's letting them know that we all have spiritual gifts. We all have spiritual gifts. Whether you just came in a month ago, we all have spiritual gifts. But those spiritual gifts are going to be developed over time. So the spirit, whatever gifts you have, they're going to be used at the, at the appropriate time that the Most High has a day. You got to build your spirit up, build up to that. But we all have gifts. We all have talents. We all have abilities, and we're going to exercise them in our due time. Right, pull up that definition for gifts. Pull up that definition for gifts. Gift. Uh, go to the definition number two. Gift. A natural ability or talent. A natural ability or talent. Many of us can, can attest to, be, said before we came into truth, there were certain things that we just was able to do and didn't even know how it was in our spirit. We just, all, we just knew how to do certain things. As soon as it was shown to us, we picked it up like that. That's a, a natural gift, a, a natural ability or talent. We was, we was all given some form of gift from day one. Like the scriptures say in Jeremiah 1 and 5, the Most High knew us before we was born. He, all, he, he, pla he placed us all where we are. We went through what we went through in life for today, for the time that we in this truth. And whatever gifts or abilities we got is for the truth. It's for the building up of the nation of Israel. Um, get, pull up that Webster's one. Gift definition. To endow with some power, quality, or attribute. We all have a certain a certain disposition of some some power, quality, or attribute. We all we, we we all of us have a thing that we do, and when we do it, it's with power. It, it's making effect. And no matter we we don't we, we don't have to certain things that we know how to do. We don't necessarily have to study it. We don't gotta spend eight years in college. We just know how to do it. We just do it naturally. Those things that we have that's innate in us, we have to use them for the building up of the body, for the building up of the nation of Israel. In due time, in our due time, the first, the first, the first priority, of course, is us getting our minds into God's laws and learning his laws and applying them. Then once we get to a certain, uh, when we're when we ready, then it's time to apply our gifts and the talents and build up the body, help build up the body. Uh, Read verse 2 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. It says, no, he said, ye know that ye were Gentiles. We know when you look in the Bible dictionary, it says the Gentiles was usually a non-Israelite people. Those that wasn't Israel, they Gentiles and they still are Gentiles. It ain't no, you were Gentiles. No, you're still a Gentile. But for us, you were Gentiles because we was following Gentile ways. Go to uh, First Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 1, just to prove that. What, what, what is Paul talking about? He said, you know that ye were Gentiles. Ye were Gentiles. Second Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 1. Not long after, this king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this was King Antiochus. He was trying to compel us to depart from our laws and follow after the laws of the Greeks, to do after their customs and their ways and their they way of doing things. Jump to verse 6. Verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. They stopped us from keeping our Sabbath days. The seven-day Sabbath, they was forbidden. We was forbidden to keep it. We had to keep it in secret. Read. Or ancient feasts. Or our ancient feasts. We wasn't able to keep Passover peaceably. We wasn't able to keep the Day of Atonement peaceably, peaceably. Pentecost. We weren't able to do those things that was outlined for us to do in our laws. We weren't able to do it peacefully. Read. 
or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. We weren't even allowed to call ourselves Jews. So if we weren't allowed to call ourselves Jews, what were we doing? Because those that were still professing to be Jews and saying who we were, we were put to death. Read. Verse 7. And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Uh -huh. Verse 8. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighboring cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashion and be partakers of their sacrifices. So they set up a decree against us that we would not be able to do after our laws, but after their laws, after what they put in place. Meaning we were eating, the, they was forcing us to eat swine's flesh, doing all type of abominable things that went against God's laws. Read. Verse 9. And whosoever would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. So we were forced to live as Gentiles. So that's why when you get to the New Testament, he refers to the Jews and Gentiles. Because we were forced to live after their customs and their ways. We weren't allowed to keep God's laws. Those that was keeping God's laws was put to death. So that's why in, in 1 Corinthians, Paul said, ye were Gentiles. You were doing after the ways of the nations. You were going, for us today, you were going to the Christian church. You was doing those foolish things. You was going to the club, reveling, doing all this, all manner of wickedness. But now we are called to keep God's commandments. We are in a state of repentance. Uh, go to, read on, go back to 1 Corinthians 12. Go to verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3. Wherefore, I give to you understand that no I give man. You to understand. Wherefore, I give you to understand. That no man speaking by the Spirit of God call of Jesus a curse. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord by the Holy Ghost. So if you keep in God, if you keep in God's laws and you have a true understanding of the Bible, you know that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for the nation of Israel. You know that He He existed. You know, you know, you know because the prophecies show it. Go to Revela Revelation 19 and 10. Because you keeping the, you keeping God's laws as you go through as you go through the the Bible and the various prophecies you see where it's, it's, it speak about Christ. Read Revelation chapter nineteen and verse ten. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The prophets prophesied about Jesus, about him coming and dying for the sins of the nation of Israel. If you look at Isaiah, what's that, 53? Isaiah 53. Speak of him when he, when he him coming to bring forth judgment to this earth. To this earth. What's that, Isaiah 63, right? It, the, the prophecies speak about Christ. Christ is... And I'm going to say it. Christ is the God of the Old Testament. He's the one that was dealing with us, directing us and guiding us. Because the Most High put it in his hand when you read Ephesians, when you read the book of Ephesians. Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Christ is the one that deals with us and instructs us. It always been that from the beginning. Read on. And back in 1 Corinthians 12 and 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts. But the same spirit. So it says there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Diversities, bring up that definition of diversity. We're going to read the first and second definition. There are diversities of gifts. Remember, gifts is a natural talent or ability that the most high put in your spirit. In some, of that, some cases, some of us was born, some of us was born with those with certain gifts and talents, and some of us learn certain gifts and talents through the life that we live, through the jobs that we work, through the experiences that we had through life. We learn how to do such things, and it's natural in us. We just know how to do it. We learned all those things for today, for the day that we came into this truth, and we build our spirits up. Read that definition. Diversity, the condition of having or being composed of different elements, especially the inclusion of people 
of people of different races. Uh, let's get the number two. Let's get that part. An instance of being composed of different elements or qualities. An so all of us it said diversity. So we all have different elements of, of talents or gifts. You can have two brothers that know how to work on a car, but them two brothers that know how to work on a car, this is just an example. Them two brothers that know how to work on a car, one may know, one may, let's say one, let's say it's a, a, a part that's behind the engine. One brother gonna take everything off at the top to get to that piece in the behind the engine to change that one part. The other brother gonna lift the car up and go from the under go from under the car and change it. Same, you doing the same job, got the same ability and talent, but they handle it different. It's diversities of gifts. We all have different talent. And that's just a small example, but we all got different abilities and talents that we are give that we the most high gave us that we can build up the body. Read. Verse five. Wait, did you read that? Yeah, you read the second one. Uh, yeah, read. Verse 5. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. Pull up that definition of administration. Administration. Performance of executive duties. Definition 2. The Man act. Management. So performance of executive duties or management. If, you, if any of y'all ever, you, were, you ever worked in the company, if you ever been in management, or you've been, under, you've been under management, when you look at a job, you got, you got a, um, some jobs, they can call it different things, but you got a supervisor, you got a, a, a first manager, second manager, a, a department head, you got the store manager, you got different things. Those are different levels of administration because they all got different responsibilities, but they, within the same business, running the same thing. It's the same with the, same with, and it's true. You got, it's different administrations. You got the soldiers, you got officers, you got different tiers of officers, you got captains, deacons, uh, up to the bishop. They all have different responsibilities, but the whole goal is one is one main goal and focus. But they got different different levels of uh, business that they are managing on those different levels. Read. Verse 6. And there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. So it says different operations. That's the different offices. We got, you got security. You got the kitchen. You got the decorating team. You got the various offices within, the, it's within one body, but we all indirectly working together to make sure that the body is edified, to make sure that the body is doing good, make sure the body is properly prepared for. You got security, treasury, video team, et cetera. All of, all of them are set to, to care for the body. Read on. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So how these gifts, how these different operations and gifts come out is how the Most High set it in order. The Most High set it in order, and it's manifested by His Spirit. To pro, what does it say? To profit. To, every, to giving every man to profit with all. So everybody in here... We not, it's not a one-man show. We all in here together. We in here for each other. Whatever level you at, whether you a visitor, you a member, officer, soldier, wherever, wherever you at, you have something to add to this body. If you a visitor that just came into the doors a month ago, guess what you got? You giving the, the soldiers and the officers some work to do. Now we got to work on building your spirit up. You necessary. You need it. Read. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So it says, for to one is given the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. This is, this is, this is that brother or sister that's an excellent counselor. You go to them about anything, they're going to be able to take you to the Scriptures, give you counsel, and you, you're going to be confident in making your decision. The excellent counselor, able to go on the Scripts and guide you on the right path. Give us uh, Sirach chapter 1 and 19. Sirach chapter 1, verse 19. Because the wisdom is you applying the commandments. This Essentially, read. Ecclesiasticus chapter 1 and verse 19. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding, and exalteth them to honor that hold her fast. So when you have wisdom, you're skillful in everything that you do. You're tactful. You know how to make things work and make things happen. 
just off the, just, you see it and you can do it. You see it and it's done. You got wisdom. You know how to, hey, you know what? Put this over here. Let's do this. Let's do that. You can move. You can counsel. Somebody come to you. Okay, this is, this sounds like the problem. Hey, go to this scripture. You're able to direct and guide people out of the scriptures off the bat and get them counsel on they, on they decisions that they make. Uh, what's the, read the last part of the eight. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. One more script on that wisdom. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 16 and 23. 2 Samuel chapter 16 and 23. This is that brother or sister that operate with wisdom. They have, they have, they got that gift, the most high and gifted them with wisdom. Read that. 2 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 23. And the counsel of Ahithophel which he counseled in those days was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. It says his counsel was as, as, as the oracle of God, meaning when you went to him for counsel, on, when you go to that brother or sister that got, the, that got that gift of wisdom, you go to them for counsel and you leave charged up, ready to make whatever move it is with confidence and no doubt because they, they got that gift of wisdom. Knowledge. Go to Malachi chapter 2 and 7. So another, another, another is given the gift of knowledge, the word of knowledge, by the same spirit. By the same spirit. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So, and, so the priest's lips should keep knowledge. The leader of the people, his lips should keep knowledge, meaning they be studying. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. And they're going to seek the law at his mouth. The brother that got the, 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 the brother or sister got that, that, um, that gift of knowledge. You got a question about any priest, scripture, something in the history, they're going to be able to take you to it and give you understanding on what it means. They're going to be able to take a, hey man, what is that scripture they talk about? David did is right. Oh, I know what it said right here. They're going to take you to it quick. They got the gift of knowledge. They store up knowledge, and they know how to, they, they, they store up knowledge, and they have the proper understanding of that knowledge. They don't, they, it's, not, it's not the brother that just know precepts. This is the brother that know the precepts, and he can give you the understanding. Um, go to Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. They got a great, these brothers, these brothers and sisters, they got a great memory. And it's, it's a, hey, what is that? Hey, what is that? And they be able to take you to it and be like, hey, this is what it means, too. They're not just giving you precepts but don't know what it means. They're giving you the precepts and the understanding. Read that. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. So if you have knowledge, that means you have understanding. If you just know precepts, you don't have knowledge. If you say you got knowledge, that means you understand. You can explain it. This is the brother or sister that got a gift of knowledge. Go to Proverbs 18 and 15. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 15. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. So the ear of the say, what does it say? Ear of the prudent? Seeketh knowledge. Seek if knowledge, not meaning that you just, you got the precept sheet and you just looking at the, let the brothers, well, sisters got a precept sheet, you just looking at the precept sheet and they say, uh, spirit, John 6, 63. You just look at the, the reference. You don't know what the scriptures say. And that's not, no, nah, you ain't got no knowledge. You just know what precept said. Knowledge is understanding. You understand what you're going to. You understand the scripture that you're calling out. And there's some brothers that's extremely good at that. They know that they, they remember the scripture. And they can explain it. Everybody can't do that. Everybody ain't got that gift. But it's some brothers that do. And they're, they're all necessary. Read on uh, back to 1 Corinthians 12 and 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. So another person is given faith, the gift of faith. Go to Mark, uh, Mark chapter 11 and verse 23. Another is given the gift of faith. Faith. Remember, faith, I think a couple weeks ago, 
faith, when you uh, look at Hebrews chapter 11, it's the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Read. Mark chapter 11 and verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. This is that brother, no matter what you put in front of him, no matter how hard it look, even if he don't know how to do it, he's going to make it happen. Because he got faith. He got faith that's going to move mountains. He's going to make it happen. You tell, you tell him, hey, go change this alternator. He never changed the alternator day in his life. He's going to figure it out and he can get it done. And that's a light example. But the brother that got faith, he can he gonna do he gonna do anything. He he's not limited to he not limited to no specific responsibility. This brother all around, he well rounded. He's gonna be able to do anything. Ain't nothing that you're gonna put in his face that he gonna be fearful or scared to try to knock it out. He's gonna make things happen. He's gonna make things happen where most would be like, no, nah, I don't know if we could do that. I don't know. He's gonna be like, no, nah, we could do it. Let's 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 work at it. We're gonna make it happen. That's that brother of faith, and that's, that's necessary in the body. That's necessary. Uh, read the second part of nine, verse 9. And back to 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. To another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another the gift of healing. Go to Sirach chapter 38 and verse 3. Sirach chapter 38 and verse 3. Forgive me if I'm going extremely fast. Ecclesiasticus chapter 38 and verse 3. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head and in the sight of great men he shall be in admiration. Uh-huh. So the skill of the physician read it again. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head. So the skill of the physician shall lift up his head. Why is his head going to be lifted up? Go to verse 4. Verse 4. The Lord have created medicines out of the earth. And he that is wise will not abhor them. Because the physician is going, when you got ailments and uh, various issues in your body, the, f the physician is that one that's go that, that has knowledge of herbs, knowledge of natural, he got natural remedies. He or she got natural remedies to alleviate your headaches, alleviate your pain in your hip. He going to be able to, he or she is going to be able to direct and guide you and to use a specific herb a remedy, some honey, or whatever the, whatever the case may be, some herbs and spices mixed together, and it's going to help, help get rid of that headache, or whatever the case may be, essential oils, different things like that. Go to Psalms 104 and 14. And it, it, we ain't talking about no, uh, you come up here and I'm going to lay hands on you. No. No way. Psalms chapter 104 and verse 14. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle uh -huh. and herb for the service of man. Herbs for the service of man. So that person that got that gifts of healing, he, he, that, he or she is knowledgeable with herbs, knowledgeable with natural, natural things that natural things that will that heal the various components of your body, that heal the ailments, the things that you're going through, cleanse out your gut. Cleans out your bloodstream. They know the herbs to they know the proper herbs and, and 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 remedies to be able to rid your body of those things. Read on. Is that it on that verse? No. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. All right, back to 1 Corinthians 12 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All right, so go to uh, 2 Ezra chapter 1 and verse 35. Dealing with that first one, miracles. This ain't no Benny Hinn, mass service. Uh, who else? Who else? What's the name of them pastors? Creflo Dollar, this ain't come up to the altar, let me lay hands on you. You pass out and everybody jumping around. No, nah, we ain't doing that. We Second have. Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 35. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me, to whom I have showed no signs. 
Yet they shall do that I have commanded them. He says, to whom I have shown no signs. He haven't shown, the most high ain't shown us no signs. What we did, we seen Deuteronomy 28, and that attested to our spirit. That's why we're here today. No signs, no wonders. Those, those things that the apostles was doing, that was during that time. Those, those things are not happening today. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.